Hello and welcome to this tutorial on inserts. Inserts is a very powerful feature in CRD that enable you to take items from a database or take items from uh, your, your own user created constants or even be able to take in values like con date constants, time constants and insert them not only anywhere say in an email output but even into the parameters of your crystal report. Let's take a look at a couple of different uses. In the case of parameters, you'll, also, you'll notice that when you get to the parameters section, that a nice little window pops up here on the right called inserts. There are several different types of inserts that you can use. You can use a crystal constant. These are built-in crystal constants in the crystal API that you can utilize things like current date, current time, month to date. CRD constants, these are built-in CRD constants that you can use. Again, things like current date, current time. User defined constants, these are user constants that you've created yourself. Say you needed to insert your own particular formulae that you've established. Parameters, which these are parameters, these are parameters that are interrogated from looking at your crystal report. Event-based data, which is a constant that comes from the data created or generated when you're establishing an event-based schedule. Data items, which these are items from a database built off of a query that you can insert anywhere in the software and user defaults typically used during email output where you can insert default subject default attachment or a default message In this case let's first start off with some parameters so you'll notice here I have a couple of different parameter values here say you needed a report to run for a particular date say today well then rather than you either manually typing in a particular date or selecting that date from a drop-down list, why not use a CRD constant so that way the report will always run for run its data for that given date. So say we want a, re a report to run for today's date. Simply go to your CRD constant, take current date, drag it, and drop it. And there we go. Say really you actually want it to run for seven days ago. So under the current date, select current date, and then go down to adjust its value. So we would say negative 7. Take it and drop it. At this point, this is a nice reminder. You want to make sure that the date and time format matches that of your crystal report, or else you'll get a parameter error. So know that your date and time format needs to match exactly in terms of the number of year digits, the number of month digits, and the delimiter between the month, years, and the dates. So in your report, if they're supposed to be a slash, then make sure you even edit this field here to make sure it's a slash. Select from the drop-down list also the type that you want to use. So say you, in your report, you actually have a date range. Rather than manually selecting a date range from your crystal report in CRD, again, you can use CRD constants to handle the date range. Simply drag the particular date range, date, and then also you can drag its other adjust date. So say we actually want to do current date, which is zero there, adjust that, and then drag that there. We have some more advanced type of ones you could use. So say you wanted to capture data between last month. So let's see. I believe we have a last month start. So let's take month start last month and then month end last month. So we'll automatically take the beginning, the first day of last month, and then the last day of last month and then run the report for the given range of those dates between there and there. 
Perfect. Let's take a look at an advanced way to handle your parameters using a data-driven schedule. Rather than us simply manually selecting a particular parameter value, we can actually use what's called data-driven data to handle that parameter value. That way, it's actually going to populate, based on your data in a database, all of the parameter values in your list automatically. For the full details on how to set up a data-driven schedule, please check out the data-driven tutorial. But it's as simple as selecting data-driven data. These are values within my database here. And I'm simply sucking out the company name. And then dragging it and dropping it here. So essentially what will happen, we'll run it for all of the company names listed within my database, feeding it directly into the parameter of my crystal report. Again, for the full detail on the data-driven schedule, check out the data-driven schedule tutorial. This is an example of using inserts in an event-based schedule. In this event-based schedule, what we're doing is we're actually monitoring a database for, data, for changes in a database record and off the basis of that, adding new records to a completely different database. So we've already established a condition in our event-driven schedule where we're actually monitoring for that information. In an event-based schedule, you can take that information that we're monitoring or that database we're monitoring, take those fields and insert them in the new ones using the insert function. For details on the event-driven schedule, make sure you check out the event-driven schedule tutorial. These are a couple of fields that we're monitoring for in my database here. All we're simply doing is we're actually talking to a different database here using a custom task, update and do insert a new database record, looking at a specific table, looking at a specific column, and then taking a specific record or a specific field from the other database, dragging it and dropping it in the value section. So essentially what's happening is we actually are t sucking information from one database to another. And you'll notice it's identified as an insert by the nice little bit of language here. This is an example of inserts being used in an email, specifically in a dynamic or data-driven schedule. What you can use inserts for is to actually customize the email that's being sent out to your recipients. In the case of a data-driven schedule, we're actually sucking out the email fields using a data-driven insert here. Again, these are those fields in my database and inserting them directly into the email field. But you can go the extra mile and even customize things like the subject line or even the body of the email. So we have here company name, which again is an insert. Simply go to your insert screen, look up at the particular field, drag it, and drop it here. You can mix it with static data and dynamic data as well. Say it's not necessarily data-driven information that you want to insert. You can even insert those same date and time constants directly into the email as well. So we have here a current date. Again, all we did was simply take our CRD constant current date, drag it, and drop it there. You can also use it to customize the body of the email. So say, for example, you want to put the person's first name just to make things that much more convenient. So simply copy and take, use your data-driven data, and then take the person's first name 
and drag it and drop it there. So when the email comes out, it's going to say, Hello, Jonathan. Hello, Mary. Hello, Roberta. It's all there. Inserts can also be used to customize the name of your output file. So in the case of a data-driven schedule, you can do things like put the company name, so that way it's customized for each company. You can use it to put in other information from your database, like current period data, maybe inf another information, and attach salesperson. You can also use it to also append a time and date stamp or even adjust that value accordingly. You can also create data items. Data items are a query that you actually pull from your database that you can insert anywhere in the software, like in an email to report stats or into the parameters of your database of your report. Simply click the little building blocks there, bring up your data item window. You'll see your list of data items available here. If you want to add more, just click Add. You'll name it, and then select from the database that has the values that you desire. It'll bring up our simple querying tool, which will connect to that database, and then select the table you're looking at. From here, you can do either the simple querying here by simply parsing out the records that you don't want. And then drag it down. Once you're happy with your data item, you can easily go back and check a look and take a look at them and use them accordingly. You can edit them, remove them, all of that good stuff. Also with inserts, finally, you can create your own user constants and use them anywhere in the software as well. This is a user-based formula that gives you the freedom to set it up however that you like. This is pretty helpful for a lot of you users out there that have a repository of formulae that you have to constantly feed into your various crystal reports that need to run. Instead of having them outside of your scheduling process, you can bring that entire repository of your formulae and bring it inside of CRD and quickly, easily insert it and use it wherever you like. Excellent. Well, that's a bit of a tutorial on all the various things you can do with inserts. There's a lot of advanced things you can tie into it as well. But inserts are what really bring out the power of CRD, enabling you to automatically run reports for specific dates, easily customize emails, even automatically populate parameter values. Please feel free to check out the specific tutorials for event-driven schedules or data-driven schedules so you can see exactly how they work. Well, thank you very much for joining. Bye for now.